specifically rejected the effort back in 94, 95 to regulate the swamp, the derivatives that are a quintessential Wall Street creation, have some small utility at an economic level, but became an enormous revenue stream for banks. And they were unregulated. People made a fortune. We taxpayers hold the bag. Now, the money, put in perspective, the $12.9 billion, a small piece of the whole bailout, Arne Duncan, our Secretary of Education, has $4 billion to redo all of K-12. And everybody's saying, isn't this great, $4 billion? Goldman Sachs got $12.9. $8 billion for high-speed rail. Entire high-speed rail stimulus effort, $8 billion. Goldman Sachs got 12.9. So what are the priorities in terms of infrastructure investment, job creation, building the foundation of an economy that will permit us to be competitive so that real Americans can get jobs, not just investment bankers and lawyers? Let me ask you, the American people are astounded that a year later, many of these banks now, especially the biggest ones, have not only recovered but are reporting record profits, while our, the unemployment rate of the people continues to increase. Right. And President Obama has this summit uh, uh, right. now to try to deal with the job situation. What should the Obama administration do uh, now uh, to begin having an impact on the, this escalating unemployment rate? Look, the reality is the unemployment problem is structural. And I think what happened, unfortunately, is that the collapse of the last year metastasized a much longer, dangerous structural transformation of our economy, where the manufacturing base of our economy has disappeared over a period of 30 years. I think we all know that story. What we need to do is invest in technology, biotech, nanotech, invest in education in a very significant way, K-12 through and higher ed, to create the skill sets, create the ingenuity. The one competitive advantage we have always had, we always will have, is creativity. That's what we have to invest in. It doesn't generate overnight jobs. Having said that, giving all the money to investment banks isn't how you generate those jobs. You should, and, and the irony, if you, you see it in the commentary or what uh, Chairman Bernanke said yesterday, he said the problem is the banks aren't lending. Wait a minute. He's the one who gave the banks all the money, and I kept saying to Geithner and Bernanke, negotiate. They don't know how to ask anything back in return for giving the banks all this liquidity. Why was it not a precondition of their being bailed out that they lend? Why was it not a precondition that they reform mortgages? In other words, so many consumers are still underwater. Their houses worth worth less than the mortgage. Why not go to the banks and say, you must reduce the face value of mortgages by X percent? We're giving you trillions of dollars, not only cash, but the hidden subsidy that people don't focus on. When credit is at zero percent, banks borrow at zero. They can buy T-bills at three percent and make a huge sum of money. And they're doing it with our money. In other words, we have created this money machine for those who control capital, which is okay if we then, on the other side of the equation, say, use it for good purpose, not for bonuses, but to invest in our economy. And that is not what's happening. They don't know how to negotiate for us. And that was what was so infuriating about the IG report, which, which verified what so many of us had been saying. And I wrote uh, one of my slate columns, AIG, again and again, or I think it was actually called Geithner's Disgrace. He doesn't know how to negotiate for us. We're going to come back to this conversation. We're speaking with the former governor of New York, Elliot Spitzer, now a Slate columnist. Stay with us.
singing, Can I Have My Money Back? This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're broadcasting on over 800 stations on Pacifica and NPR and Low Power FM college and community radio stations on public access TV and PBS TV stations and both TV satellite networks. Dish Network, Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV and Direct TV, Channel 375. And we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. Our headlines are also available in Spanish for any radio station to take is over 250 are. We are with Elliot Spitzer, the former governor of New York, former New York State Attorney General. He sued AIG, among other entities. He's now a Slate columnist, and we're talking about the state of the economy. Do you think that Timothy Geithner should remain Treasury Secretary, Governor Spitzer? Well, well let me say this. I would not have appointed him, and, and, uh, and I think it's because he came from a New York Fed that had been the architect and overseer of so much of what has gotten us into trouble. We we'll give you one small example. Everybody says now we need a systemic risk regulator, somebody to look at sort of the, the aggregate risk, the excess leverage in our economy. And, and just so people understand this notion, the way I analogize it, CO2 is to global warm, warming what debt is to systemic risk. Debt but in individual transactions may look okay, just like one cow emitting you know, methane may look okay. You put it all together, you have a crisis. Now, why is that relevant? Tim Geithner, as president of the Fed, Fed was the overseer of that structure. He was the one whose very mandate was to look at this. So would I have appointed him? No. Would I now remove him? Look, I have fundamental policy disagreements with him. I guess the answer is yes. Uh, because I don't think he should have been there initially, and I think that we are going down a very dangerous path. And in just a few minutes, we will get job data that, um, if the sort of early data signs are correct, will once again show job losses in the 150 to 200 thousand uh, dollars, 200 thousand range last month, bouncing around 10.2 stated unemployment, really closer to 17 and a half to 20. When you look at total unemployment, we've got a crisis there, and this. The architect of the former system shouldn't be there. We need a Joe Stiglitz or Rob Johnson, people who think in a very different way about creating jobs through small business and getting capital to small business, which is not what these major banks do anymore. Should Ben Bernanke serve a new term? You know, look, th these are extremely smart, capable people. I just disagree with them. So when I say the answer is no, it's not because I think they're bad people. But, but I just don't think that as somebody who was there who permitted over and over these bubbles to, to be inflated and then said, we'll deal with it when it collapses without understanding, he had no conception of the subprime impact across our economy. We began doing subprime cases when I was AG in 99. In 2004, I wrote an article where I said, a lot of this debt's going to explode. This isn't good debt. Where was the Fed? The Fed believed this crazy system of securitization where they believed that somehow they turned it into AAA quality debt when anybody who looked at it knew that these ninja loans and all the other games that we now fully understand were, were a facade. It, it was dangerous stuff. So, no, I bring somebody in with a different perspective. And of the, the proposals being considered now in the House and the Senate for uh, new financial regulation of the system, what do you think is the most critical thing that the Congress needs to do? Well, look, I, I, I'm a big fan of Liz Warren, and so I, I'm, I'm excited at the notion that we'd get a consumer protection agency with Liz, the, hopefully somebody— Explain li who Liz Warren is. Elizabeth Warren has been put in charge of the oversight panel to actually look at how the monies are being spent through TARP and the others, and she's done a great job. She's a professor at Harvard Law School, written extensively about bankruptcy, the concerns of the middle class, had a good post on Huffington Post yesterday uh, about detailing the, the plight of the middle class in America. So that is good. But I also wrote something called the regulatory charade. We don't really need new rules. The rules are there. What we need are regulators willing to use them. The Fed has all the power it needs. And the very fact that Chairman Bernanke yesterday was listing all the good things they had done proves they had the power under existing laws. He just didn't want to use them. Tim Geithner, as head of the New York Fed, could have done whatever needed to be done, but they didn't do it. So much more important, and the reason I call it the regulatory charade, businessmen and women don't want us to examine their decisions, so they point the finger at regulators. Regulators don't want us to ask the hard question, why didn't you use your existing power? So they say, we didn't have enough power. Writing a new law to give them more power gives Congress something to do, so everybody's happy. So we write a new law. There's a big ceremony in the Rose Garden signing it, and we pretend that solves the problem. The real problem was we didn't have regulators willing to do what they should have done. Who was it? Geithner Bernanke. 
And that's the fundamental problem. You need people there willing to challenge a capital structure that is not working. Uh, Governor, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask now that you have your new life as a...